Americans. You're never obligated to join a plan, so don't wait. Call for your free Medicare coverage review today and see how the licensed insurance agents at Plan Enroll can help you find a plan that's right for you. Feel confident in your Medicare choices. Call Plan Enroll today. Meet Omnilux Contour, an LED light therapy mask clinically proven to reduce fine lines and wrinkles. Find out how you can improve your skin at OmniluxLED.com. Why are you wearing uncomfortable jeans when you could be wearing Muggsy jeans? One of our thousands of five-star reviews said, these jeans feel like rolling around in a puddle of puppies. <laughs> Head to Muggsy.com to get your first pair of the most comfortable jeans ever worn. 48 past the hour, it's been a month since the mass shooting at a bowling alley and restaurant in Lewiston, Maine, that left 18 people dead. A staggering number that only begins to show the magnitude of America's gun problem. The tragedy is one of more than 615 mass shootings in the U.S. this year, and gun violence has killed more than 39,000 Americans so far in 2023, a number of deaths that far outpaced the rest of the world. Today, to fight this epidemic, four senators are introducing new legislation. They're trying again. The Gas-Operated Semi-Automatic Firearms Exclusion, or Go Safe Act. Joining us now, one of those lawmakers, Independent Senator Angus King of Maine. It's great to have you, great to see you. This is such an important issue. Uh, tell us more about it, and is it going to happen? Well, the people that are sponsoring, I think it's significant. Of the four of our four principal sponsors, three have never sponsored an assault weapons okay. bill before. Okay, well, that's helpful. so. We're, we're we're taking a leap here and doing something that we think is absolutely necessary and will work. Uh, the what we're focusing on is the way the gun operates rather than what it looks like. Okay. Because if if you say you're banning a gun because of what it looks like, the manufacturers can modify the the looks and then they escape the, the, the ban. So what we're focusing on is the high capacity magazine. Right. This is the business end of these things. That's what makes them so dangerous is when the shooter can keep shooting. So our bill says you have to have a fixed magazine in the gun, 10 bullets maximum, no, no, uh, no detachable magazine. Right. The shooter in Lewiston had two magazines oh. duct taped together so when one ran out he could just flip it over and put, plug it in. That's what we're going after. And there's some other uh, parts of it too, but the, the fundamental is to, to really get at this, uh, these high capacity magazines on these guns that make them so dangerous. Because when you have to stop to reload, right. that's when you can intervene in the, in the shooting. So what's the argument to gun owners who want their rights protected and would argue that they should have a right to have this weapon? Well, the, the best argument is just, Justice Scalia, who was really the, a pro-gun conservative justice. And he made the point that the first amendment the second amendment is not absolute like the first amendment there are limitations and he said it doesn't mean that you can use any gun whatsoever in any place whatsoever under mm -hmm. any circumstances so what we're, this is really historically consistent with a hundred years ago, almost a hundred years ago, machine guns have been mm -hmm. heavily regulated, essentially banned and sawed off shotguns. Why? Because they're especially dangerous. This is exactly the same uh, pattern that we're going after to say, look, these fit into this category of especially dangerous we're not taking guns away from anybody, we're, but we're saying you can't manufacture new ones with these detachable magazines. Just, Senator, obviously our, our thoughts are with those in, in, in Lewiston and in Maine. I um, want to turn you now to another matter. Um, the House of Representatives and fits and starts is trying to grapple with the supplemental the White House wanted, which right. is Israel funding Ukraine's border security and uh, funding for the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, the Senate has been watching this from a bit of a distance. Give us an update as to where you guys stand and how optimistic are you that something can get done here in these next few weeks, probably before the, the winter break, to send funding to Israel and Ukraine? Well, the expectation 
expectation is that we're going to get to the supplemental next week. That's the that's mm -hmm. the plan. Uh, now, the, the the wrinkle in the Senate is that the Republicans are saying we won't do Ukraine without border security. So there are some pretty intense discussions going on, principally between Chris Murphy of Connecticut and James Langford of Oklahoma on border security, not immigration reform, but the narrow issue of border security. I'm hopeful that we can get there because there really is consensus that we do need to tighten up border security uh, at the southern border. So that's the discussion in the Senate. Now, I, I can't predict what the House will do. I, here, here's the thing, though. If the bill goes to the floor of the House, it'll have the votes. The question is whether the, the, the speaker will bring bring the, the, the uh, supplemental uh, to the floor, because I think between uh, Republicans and, and, and Democrats in the House, there's a s clear majority in favor of funding both of these priorities. And by the way, Ukraine would be a colossal, historic mistake mm -hmm. if we walked away from Ukraine. We would be seeing the ramifications of that for generations. Absolutely. So, that's the that's the thing that I think we were all focused on. There's consensus on the Israel uh, uh, aid, although, as you know, there are discussions going on about should there be some conditions, limitations, reporting requirements. Uh, there already are reporting requirements and limitations in U.S. law, uh, Title 22 and others. Uh, so th that's a that's a discussion that's going on. The administration is working very diligently with the Israelis to uh, to have them be more uh, I, I hesitate to use the word surgical but more careful in their in their campaign against Hamas uh, so uh, I, I'm I'm mildly optimistic but you can never bet on what the right. what the Congress right. is going to do and particularly the house these days that is for true. sure so, uh, senator you, you follow foreign policy as well as anybody in the, in the Senate I'm just curious whether you think Israel's fundamental goal in the Gaza war, the destruction of Hamas as a political force, is achievable, and whether that's still something that you and most senators support. Well, I, I think it's, it, I'm really glad that you started that way because what's being lost in all the, the, the scenes of bombing and those kinds of things is how bad Hamas is. Yeah. And they don't care about the Palestinian people. Some of their leaders have actually said that. We don't worry about water or economic development. We want to destroy Israel. And, and they, are, they are, in fact, putting their military infrastructure in civilian situations just to bait the, the Israelis in, into attacking. And by the way, that in itself is a war crime putting your <clears throat> military infrastructure in a, in a civilian structure. The question you said is, is it achievable to destroy Hamas? I think that depends on what your definition of destroy is. Are they going to be able to kill every single or arrest or imprison every single Hamas uh, fighter of 20 to 30,000 people? Probably not. Can they dismantle the leadership? and the infrastructure, I think that is possible, but doing it in such a way as to not uh, continuously inflame the, 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 the non-Hamas Palestinians, and I, I think they could do a lot better job of getting humanitarian aid in, open the border in Israel, not just the one down in, in Egypt, uh, and also control the violence of the settlers in the West Bank. That worries me a great deal that that there have been two or three hundred Palestinians killed by settlers in the West Bank. My fear is spreading this to an, another front. And then, of course, there's Hezbollah waiting in the wings on the north. So Israel's got a very tough task to try to eliminate Hamas effectively, while at the same time not spreading the conflict and also inflaming the Arab street to make it impossible for people like Jordan and, and the Gulf states to continue to, to, to be uh, have normal relations. Independent Senator Angus King of Maine, thank you very much for coming on. It's great to see you. Great to see you, Thanks. Mayor. Thanks.